All right. Uh, if you'll basically close your book and, and look at the front cover, you'll notice that the label says this is an introduction to the Constitution. Fourth uh, of July, we celebrated 225 year anniversary of the signing of the Declaration of Independence. Back in 1983, I started studying the IRS in particular and the U.S. Constitution in general. So I've been studying the Constitution for about 18 years. Now, I've tried to condense that 225 years of history and that 18 years of study into an eight hour class. This is going to be incredibly superficial. I am going to open up all sorts of cans of worms. And at the end, I anticipate that you will have far more questions than you do right now. So I'm going to be covering the material relatively quickly. It's supposed to get, basically get you started and give you a good foundation. Now, I know that this particular group is a little bit more familiar with the way things really are. And, and I definitely am willing to handle any of your questions at, toward the end of the class. Uh, I've got, I started out with a 48-page handout, and there was too much information to cover in eight hours. And so I added information. We're now up to 66 pages, if that makes any sense to anybody. <laughs> So um, we are going to go through this relatively quickly, but this is, again, only an introduction, but it's an important foundation. Even those of you that are talking about uh, you know, really important issues, maybe a little bit more sophisticated issues, it's always good to go back and reestablish what your foundation is, and then it makes your high-level arguments just that much more secure. Now, before I even started the class, I've had several people point out to me that the flag is upside down. I am a lot of things. Dyslexic is not one of them. <laughs> Anybody have any idea why the flag is upside down? Flag upside down usually means trouble. It is a, it's a distress signal, and it's an emergency, a sign of emergency. I have the flag upside down deliberately. Because from my point of view, the United States is definitely in dire trouble. And the trouble stems from the fact that people living here in the United States have no idea what type of government they have. They don't know the difference between a democracy and a republic. They don't know what their rights are. And they are incapable of controlling Congress and keeping it within the constitutional box that they're supposed to be in. So the flag is upside down because I'm very, very concerned. Now, at the, in the back of the book, I have all sorts of little handouts. We will talk about those eventually. Uh, you're welcome to look at them. Those are all yours. We just did a quid pro quo exchange. You can do anything you want with them. But when I go through them, mine are in the same order that yours are. So if you don't want to be fumbling around looking for the new ones, you can kind of keep yours in the same order. Now, inside the front cover, you should have a copy of the Constitution. Many of you already have copies, but it would be totally inappropriate to teach a class on the Constitution without actually giving you a copy. One of the things that, most, that surprises most people is that it's so small. I mean, there's really not a lot here. And the purpose of the Constitution is to set up a form of government, basically to establish the principles that are involved, not what the law actually says. So you could sit down and read the Constitution cover to cover in about 15 or 20 minutes. We're going to try to spend about eight hours understanding it. Now, most of the page numbers that I reference will be in the handout. This is the, uh, if you'll notice at the bottom of all the pages, I have Session 9. I, ICP 21 is my abbreviation for Introduction to the Constitution for Patriots of the 21st Century. Uh, and then it's session nine. I've taught eight of these classes before. Now that you have paid for this class, you can attend any of my future classes for free. 
there's a lot of information here, and you know some of it goes in one ear and out the other. So if you want to attend one of my future classes, you've already paid for it. Just show. I mean, it'd be nice to let you know that you're coming, but you're not going to have to pay for it again. Just show up. All right? If you call me with questions on the phone, my first question to you is, which session are you looking at? I keep a copy of all of these documents because I keep adding information to it. And the page numbers change. So if you're asking me questions, I want to know which session you're on so that I can get my copy and we can literally be on the same page. If I say go look at page 22, that's where your answer is. I want your page 22 to be the same page 22. Right? So I, I print you know, copies for each, each uh, session that I teach. And it, and it has your date there as well. Now, uh, if you'll go to page two, I have a tentative schedule. This is the schedule that I'm going to try to keep on. Now, if you have questions, please raise your hand. Um, frequently, I will you know, say, well, we're about to cover that, and I'll, I'll just put you off. I will answer questions, however, briefly. If I, if I answer all of your questions during the day, we're never going to get finished by 6. So my goal is to try to get finished as close to 6 o'clock as possible, and then once we're you know, formally finished, anybody that has you know, prior commitments, they can leave. I promise to stay and answer questions as long as there are people here to ask. So um, we, we will just try to uh, save those questions until the end. Uh, whenever we reference the Constitution, I will, I will hold up the book and, and so you know which page numbers we're talking about. Now, let's turn to page three and get started. I have a few quotes which hopefully explain why I am here, why I've driven all the way from Austin to be here today. The first quote is from Dr. Benjamin Rush. You probably have never heard of him, but Mr. Rush says, Education is favorable to liberty. Freedom can only exist in the society of knowledge. Without learning, men are incapable of knowing their rights. And where learning is confined to a few people, liberty can neither be equal nor universal. So you have to know your rights before you can protect them. And he said that in 1786. Another person that you have heard of, I'm sure, is Daniel Webster. And Daniel says, I apprehend no danger to our country from a foreign foe. Our destruction, should it come at all, will be from another quarter from the inattention of the people to the concerns of their government. From their carelessness and negligence, I must confess that I do apprehend some danger. I fear that they may place too implicit a confidence in their public servants and fail properly to scrutinize their conduct. That in this way, they may be made the dupes of designing men and become the instruments of their own undoing. Make them intelligent, and they will be vigilant. Give them the means of detecting the wrong, and they will apply the remedy. So my purpose here is to try to make you intelligent. I'm not going to tell you what to do or which congressman to write to. I'm just going to take the Constitution and show you what the Constitution says. I will ask you to read it for yourself. And then we will draw our own conclusions about what Congress can and cannot do. And then when you sit there somewhat shocked and stunned, then you can decide how to fix the problem. Now, many of you have never met me. Some of you have seen me give a, a short presentation before. Let me tell you up front that I am an iconoclast. Now, an iconoclast is defined as a breaker or destroyer of images.